Hi, church family. It's so great to be with you again. It's Pastor Matt over at the Hollister campus, and uh, I just got back from vacation, and it was needed, and it was wonderful getting a chance to spend time with not just my uh, local family, but my a little bit extended family. We've uh, been spending some time together. We're safe. We're making sure that everybody's healthy, um, but at the same time, just needing that community. It's been so valuable. Uh, my soul needed it so badly. And uh, this week, uh, I wanted to come back to the idea of context. And as we look at the contexts of Scripture, there are many things that we don't understand because they're taken out of context. But just in general, there are things that we probably think we understand, but when we put it into the original context, it might take on a new meaning and it might open up Scripture for us in a new way. And so today I wanted to talk about the context of prayer and specifically prayer in context of Jesus. And uh, I love uh, the stories. We have over 25 accounts just in the Gospels alone of Jesus needing to get away and pray. Uh, in John chapter 17, we get a, the high priestly prayer of Jesus. And uh, prayer was such an important part of who Jesus was in his humanity. I thought it would be nice just to look at a few of the verses. I would encourage you grab your uh, Bibles and get into uh, you know, your, your scripture and read through and pay attention to uh, every time that Jesus prays. I might even encourage you, if you're one to write in your Bibles, uh, grab a different highlighter or use a square little circle as opposed to a, an actual circle. And every time you see the word Jesus praying or, or a reference to Jesus praying, mark that, identify it so that you can kind of see how Jesus prayed and what prayer was for in his uh, context. Context! So uh, I, I would encourage you as we read scripture to, um, I, I don't usually say this, but don't open your Bible because I'm going to be reading just through five different scripture. And then we'll come back and we'll talk about context of prayer in relationship to Jesus. Hear the word of God. Matthew 14, verse 23. After he had sent the crowds away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. And when it was evening, he was there alone. In Mark chapter 6, verse 46. After bidding them farewell, he left for the mountain to pray. In Luke chapter 6, verse 12. It was at this time that he went off to the mountain to pray, and he spent the whole night in prayer to God. In Mark chapter 1, it says, In the early morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went away to a secluded place, and was praying there. And finally, out of Luke chapter 5, verse 16, But Jesus himself would often slip away to the wilderness and pray. These verses are great. They give us a glimpse into how Jesus prayed. And yes, Jesus would pray like the high priestly prayer where he's praying over people. Uh, there are references to Jesus praying before a healing could take place. So yes, Jesus had these prayers that were very pragmatic and he's going to be uh, like praying for somebody or something to happen, some healing to t take place. But over and over and over again, the reference to prayer, the context of prayer in reference to Jesus was him scurrying off to some secluded place to pray to God the Father. There's something about, yes, we need to be seeing people, laying hands on people that are sick like James tells us to do. We need to be praying for the needs of others. Those are the, how do I say, easy prayers? When somebody comes and says, hey, would you pray for me? And, and you know, right there, you, you just like, yes, let's pray. But there's something about our souls. Ironically, in this season of staying in place, it's like, we don't think about it, but our souls need the solitude time to pray, maybe fast, Seek God's face in seclusion. I would encourage you to consider, maybe even this week, if you have the time and availability, to find that secluded place. Um, I have my place. Uh, I love to go to San Juan Batista, 
and uh, particularly when the school kids aren't there. And there's a, a bench after a long row of rose trees, rose bushes, where um, God and I, even in my short time here in Hollister, have had great conversations. Um, there's also a bench there that looks out over the valley. And if you look down over the cliff, you notice that uh, that's where the San Andreas Fault runs. Very fascinating. And on the other side of that, there's a road that passes by lots of cars. But in that field right there, um, I know that God has spoken to me about things regarding even church life. Uh, not an audible voice. Uh, I have stories about that another day, another time. Um, but this is God speaking to my heart because I gave him the time uh, and he's blessed me by it. When my tank is empty, I need vacation, just saying. And when my tank is spiritually empty, I need to give God more time of my day. And it, the chaos of, of my office and the even in the midst of the stay in place orders and even in the midst of pandemics, yeah, it, it, it's still busy enough that I can't devote the type of time if I get out of the office. Um, some of you can't take the time out of your day. Maybe you work a nine to five or eight to four, whatever your schedule is. Um, maybe you've got little ones that make it really hard for you to do, but I can't uh, encourage you enough. In fact, I might even say challenge you. Go, find a babysitter if you need to, go. Uh, you know, run to San Juan Batista, go over to the beach, find a place where nobody knows your name, nobody's gonna come up to you, nobody's gonna interrupt you, and, and make it more than just 10 minutes. Give God a whole night, give God whatever you need, whatever you can, and watch how he fills you up. Prayer was important to Jesus not just praying for somebody, for healing. Ah, oh, those are important. But Jesus knew to fulfill his destiny and to keep his ministry, uh, he needed to be about prayer. God bless you guys. I know that you're praying. Maybe it's a different way of praying than you've done in the past. I'd encourage you, go and do it. Let me close this in prayer right now. Father in heaven, I thank you for loving us. I thank you for wanting to be in relationship with us. And, and when we give you that time, Lord, how you bless us, thank you. Now, Father, I pray, Lord, that you would give the people that are here with us in, in these few moments um, a deeper desire to draw near to you through prayer. Lord, let your love wash into us in the midst of these moments. And Lord, if it be your will, may our spirits be open to your voice, that still small voice, to speak into those moments. Not that it's necessary, but Lord, that you could and would, and we would be receptive to your word and your voice in the midst of those moments. And ultimately, usher in your kingdom because of the faithfulness as a result of that. Uh, Lord, we love you and we thank you and we give you all the praise, glory, and honor. And we do this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, y'all. Go in peace.